Okay, so I have just gone and got myself a cup of tea and we're going to sit and we're going to have a look through the Arsenal. So I did this when I was on stream, but I thought, well, let's just pull up a video. One for the Russian units, one for the American units that are currently in the game. Obviously, we're not seeing everything that's in the game. We're seeing, I guess, the motor strelkies type stuff and then the or the motorized division. And obviously from the US, we're seeing the Marines. Um, and then whatever other bits that are still in or that are shared between the different groups or different specializations, shall we say. But let's have a look through. So we're starting with recon and we've just got the Russian stuff selected. So we're going to go through that first. I'm not going to read through every bit of detail because there's so many units here. We'll be here for hours and it's just not worth it, guys. You can pause the video at any point and have a read of all the details. Okay, so to keep it simple, what I'm going to do is first I'm just going to select the BRDM. And I'm just going to say that kinetic defense, heat defense, heat rounds, kinetic. There's two types of armor it appears on these vehicles. They have kinetic armor and they have heat protection armor. And then they have, you know, the health, which is how many hit points they have. You've got the forward speed, you've got the recon optics distance, you have their stealth rating, you have their weight, and you have whether they're amphibious or not. I assume the ones that are not amphibious don't have that there. And then you've got their weapons and their price, obviously, at the top. But if you want to look at that in detail, please pause it and read through it. I'm not going to go through that on every unit because I don't want to make this video three hours long. So that's why I'm not going to stop on everyone. Now, what you, we will do is have a look at the upgrade options for each thing. So first, we've got the BRDM2. It's a nice model, and that's one of the lovely things about this game. The models are really detailed. You can zoom in and have a good look at them. Lots of moving parts on them, doors and stuff open on some of them. Let's have a look at the weapons packages. So obviously, all placeholder things, but we get the idea. So there's your standard. Then we can have the... Uh, Cord HMG and AGS-17. You'll notice that there is a slight change up there. And then we get the auto cannon, which is obviously a bigger cannon, and we still get the AGS-17 up there. AGS-17 being grenade launcher. And then we get the Becker's module, which I assume is an active defense module or a recon module, more likely then. I think it's recon because that's gone up to 750. Do you notice? The jump there is that's gone to 750. It doesn't really change anything else. So I think that is a recon module. But you can see it all gets added. And then we can go back to the default just for the sake of it. And if we go to the armor packages, we can have a look at that. You get a base armor, which is just that. And then we can upgrade to an armored chassis, which obviously you're looking there at the difference between the armor rating at the top here. And you also notice that there's a smoke appeared there and it's no longer amphibious. So base armor... There is smoke there as well, and I missed that before, so I apologize. So base armor, we have amphibious, and we have 24 of each. If we go up to armored, we get 53 of each, and we lose that amphibious trait because it would be too heavy, it would sink. So there you go. Let's have a look back now. So we got the BRDM3, bigger vehicle, many wheels, big auto cannon on it. So, once again, we can now see that this is actually an airdrop. So this can be dropped from, I assume, a helicopter or possibly a plane, I guess. But I assume it can be, like, slung under a helicopter and you can carry it about. Uh, no amphibious here, though. And not a huge amount of armor. Let's have a look through the weapons packages. So, we get the 82A turret. We can upgrade to the AT turret. Which is just a, I think it's just a better quality anti t auto cannon, I should say. Maybe as it does more armor piercing. No, it seems to get the same amount of rounds and stuff. I think it's just the f aim time and stuff is better. It's just a better turret. And then we get the RPR5 turret. Look at that. What is going on with that? It changes everything about the back of the vehicle. That's just making it recon, basically. Look at that, the jump. 750, 950, 1200 range. It's basically making it a recon turret. 
and it also removes the auto cannon and just gives it the HMG. So it's just got a heavy machine gun. So you're giving up its capabilities as an offensive unit, basically, to get recon instead. Armor package, base, or up armored. Up armored is a lot of grill. <laughs> so that's obviously to deal with heat. And there you go, that is shown there. So base armor, 24-24. Up armor drops, or raises that to 38, but it brings heat all the way up to 140. Obviously, the idea is that a heat round hits this, and then its usual penetration efforts kind of get stopped by the grating. Interesting. Let's have a look what else we get. So, we get the four post, which is just a little recon drone. You don't get any information about it, interestingly. We can have a look at its weapon packages, though. We can either have two corner 80 GMs, or we can have empty. Oh, look at the change there. When I switched to empty, we actually got the uh, details up. That's interesting. So, details-wise, no armor, more 90, pretty fast, not much in the way of health. Is that laser designator? I think that can laser designate targets or something. Do you see it's got that little laser there? I think that's what that must be. But I can have some anti-tank weapons on it if you want. Corsair. Corsair. That is most definitely a recon drone. It can have a weapons package. We can have conkers. Or we can have attacker M ATGMs, which are slightly better, I guess. Work in progress. Uh, range 2850, range 2700. Yeah, so it's better, basically. Penetration 950 millimeters heat. And that's only 650. So there's your difference there. And then it gets optics packages, standard or advanced. Basically, it's just a bigger camera on the bottom, isn't it? Look. Looks like an AWAX thing on the bottom of it, radar and stuff. Fair enough. And that does, yeah, again, it brings the recon up to 1200. Not entirely sure how to relate that into the game at the moment because there isn't a line of sight tool or anything like that. So that's still quite confusing. Hopefully, they're going to add that. The Orion. Okay, so this is a big drone. So inner pylons, we can have Cornet, Vicir, ATGMs, or Cabs. What are those? Low drag bombs. Cab 50s. So that's actually a bomb. Uh, I guess that is a... It looks more like a rocket than a uh, bomb, but... There's the Vicir and there's the Cornets. But yes, that is a low drag bomb. And the outer pylons, same again. And then optics packages. Basic or just very good optics. Doesn't actually seem to change much. I think the little ball on the front stays the same there. Yeah. It's just a, an upgrade in terms of its visuals. Only 950 on that one though. I guess it does have more weaponry. The RPR 4A Argus. Little APC with a teeny weeny little cannon on it, apparently. Again, I'm missing the uh, the stats here for the actual unit. Oh, there we go. I've got it now. Maybe I'm too zoomed in and it's not appearing. There we go. We've got the Argus now. So just a PKT on it. Uh, let's change the armor package. Up armored. Once again, it's just massive heat increase, really. A little bit of kinetic. we got Razvedka. Have a little zoom in and look at these guys. What do they have in terms of their weapons? There we go. So, they can run fast. They have some smoke. AKMs, grenade launcher, RPG-26, and an SVD. You can click on them all to get the details. So, uh, do uh, feel free to do that. Sarmat as well. Little, little buggy. Little recon buggy. Having to keep... Hang on. Oh, that's weird. Oh, there we go. It's appeared now. Isn't that strange? When I selected these three guys, which I didn't click on before, I apologise. Just three little guys there, but... That wasn't appearing straight away. That's interesting. Sometimes that isn't coming up. It's a bit buggy. It is a demo. It is alpha still. So. Weapons packages for this. 
Ah, not a lot. Heavy machine gun or the uh, AGS, the automatic grenade launcher. The Spetsnaz group, who are currently uh, using the Batman symbol. I don't know if that is something they use in real life. And again, usual mix of weapons. And then VDV Razvedka. Same again. Right, let's have a look at the infantry. Slightly less to look through here. I think you've got more when you've got all of the vehicles because there's lots of upgrade options, whereas the infantry are just as they are. So, Desert Nikki there. Pretty standard gear. Nice looking units, though. The Morishka... M Morishka? Morashka? Pekota. Probably pronouncing that wrong. Sorry to any Russian speakers. So, this... Again... Standard infantry squad, really. Modestrogi, an old favourite from various games. Once again, I'm zoomed in and it's not showing me their card. There we go, I've got it now. These guys, the Onega Mechiki, which I assume are basically RPO launches. Yeah, there you go. So these guys, anti infantry, thermobaric rockets, I assume. Yeah, not a huge amount of damage to uh, vehicles, I guess. Igla, anti-air, Revzevitsri, which are just cheap infantry, I think. They're quite expensive, to be fair. Uh, VDV. And then more anti-air. Vehicles, there are loads here to choose from. So we got the BMD-2, uh, which we can have a look at the weapon packages. So the Conkers, or a BMD-2M. Which looks like it's got... Uh, oh, Cornets. Yeah, there we go. And it's got two machine guns on it. Where are the machine guns? Do they just count as being next to the main cannon? It does say it's got two machine guns as well. But I can't convince myself I can see them. The BMD-4... It's got more of a cannon on it. Let's have a look at the armor package. Up armored. Wait, hang on. What? Oh. that. This is acting very strangely. So base armor 38-38 and then up armored is 53-53. It's act, acting very strangely, the uh, cards at the moment. BMO1. Let's have a look at the armor packages for this. No upgrades in the cannon or anything. But we can up armor it. Once again, we're seeing that massive heat increase because of the grating armor. The 9P162 Cornet T. I guess upgrade is just a type of different type of missile. So you can either have the Cornet T or we upgrade to that. Which is fair enough. I like this though, because I wonder if it goes back inside to reload, because you can see the spare weapons in there. Does make me wonder. Is it the same with the corner? No, the corner is different. I think they they would probably fold back inside to rearm. But this one, look at how fantastically it's modelled, though. I mean, you've got to give them credit for that. And then armor package, base armor, or up armor. That's quite a lot of armor, anyway. 105, and then up to 405. It's got the uh, explosive reactive armor, of course. The that's pretty cool. In terms of armor for a unit like that. The BMP2, again, an old favorite. Uh, weapons packages, we can have the base turret. We can upgrade with Conkers. Oh, no, the Conkers come with it. What's the big difference then? So that, that gives us an automatic grenade launcher. I think that's it. Everything else is pretty much the same. Or we can go for the Bezerhawk turret, which has cornets on it. Fair enough. And then armor packages... Again, it's just up armoured with the grating armour for heat rounds. The BMP-3, another well-known weapon of war from the war game series and Warno as well. So we got a main cannon and an auto cannon. Weapons packages wise, we can upgrade to a more heavily armoured turret by the looks of it. And it changes us to get a different type of missile in there. Interesting. We can have a look at the details of that, I think. There you go. 
Lead Pursuit Missile. So yeah, it's just it's going to be slightly more powerful than the other one, isn't it? Yeah. And then you can have the Epoca module, which has the... Well, this is all different, actually, because it's got what appears to be a Burst Fire 57mm autocannon, a PKT, Cornet, and then a Bullet. And the Bullet is a Lead Pursuit Missile. So it's got Cornets and Bullet. That's this here. That's interesting. I thought the Epoch module was going to be like an active defense system, but I'm not sure now. That is a lot of weaponry on top of that vehicle. Armor packages, base armor, or upgrading again to have the explosive reactive armor. Very nice. Then we've got the BMP-97 cord. And we can upgrade that to have an auto cannon or a spitzer module. Whoa, what is that thing? Standard auto cannon, auto cannon, and a grenade launcher. That is quite a uh, hell of an upgrade. That looks so heavily armored. It looks too big for that vehicle, is what I would say. Fine. Then we've got a little Conker's truck. Oh. So little. Weapon packages. Cornets. Yeah. Pretty standard. Got the BTO. Only upgrade there by the looks of it is going to be armor packages. No, I don't get any upgrades for that now. See, when I clicked on it first. See, it does give me an armor package. I'm so it's It's a bit buggy, isn't it? Quite a lot of armor upgrade for that. No other changes though. It's got an RPO that thing, surprisingly. So it's technically anti-infantry, I guess. BTR-80, classic. Auto cannon, heavy auto cannon with conkers as well. Fair enough. Armor package, up armored. Interesting. Base armor, up armored. Doesn't change anything. I think that's broken at the minute because it doesn't change anything, does it? No, I guess that's broken. Or it's just not working for me right now and it's a bit bugged out. BTRD. Another well-known vehicle. NSV and an AGS-17. NSV sounds like night vision, but I don't know how I feel about that. And then at the top end, BTR-82AT. Has that changed anything? I don't think that's changed. I, I think it's just bugged out a lot. Because I'm sure that was from the BTR-80 rather than... It's just a bit weird. BTR-D... BTR, sorry, MDM. I have no idea what that one is. It's being very buggy. There we go. Additional stuff. So you can have some anti-air on it. A different anti-air. Anti-air with Iglas. Fair enough. The BTRD. Sorry. The BTRRD robot. Uh, conquers on that. Has it really got no upgrade options? I guess it is kind of specific, isn't it? Shrizettes. Pretty standard unit. We can change it to a Cord AGS. A ZU23. A ZU23-2M. And then with the Iglas as well. Nice set of weapons there. No armor upgrades. 
the Gaz Tiger. Standard little Jeep, really. Weapons-wise, good choice weapons here. We can have Auto Grenade Launcher, Big Heavy Machine Gun, an upgraded Heavy Machine Gun, or an Auto Cannon. Plenty of choices. And we get some armor upgrades, so we can have standard, or we can upgrade to have a little... Not a lot of armor, to be fair. I guess it's a bit of armor. Then we've got the Cornet D1, which I'm going to click off and then it's being very strange with the uh, bugs going on with this at the moment. So 80 GM or a 480 GM module. That's slightly better in terms of the missiles, but it's got less and that's got more missiles, but the missiles aren't as good. Odd options. The MTLB VM. Weapons wise, cord. We can have a KPVT, which is a proper little turret. Now, an auto cannon turret, or we can have a big auto cannon turret and a grenade launcher. Armor wise, grating armor again. Okay. So the MTLBZU-23, I mean, I could have changed these round, but no, there we go. So we can upgrade it to a GSH-30K and Igler. Much more automated looking. Guess you fire that from inside. It's quite a nasty looking uh, weapon. And then armor packages... Base are up armoured. Once again, it's that grating armour for anti-heat rounds. So, Napronik. Look at the size of the turret on that thing. Isn't that ridiculous? It's as big as the vehicle. So that's the cord, apparently. Ah, uh, it's, it's got the autocannon selected. Maybe I did that when I previously had it open. So there's the cord. There's the autocannon. Fine. The Sprut SD. Ooh, our choice here is modernization. The Sprut SDM. Ooh. It gives it a different look, doesn't it? Doesn't change the armor, though. Interesting, not a huge amount of upgrades. The T14 Armata. Come on, give me the stats. There we go. Can't do any upgrades to that. It is what it is. Has APS rounds. Active protection system rounds. Okay, so it can protect itself versus incoming missiles, basically. The T-72B1, a classic. Weapons packages. We can have the B, we can have the BA. Or we can have the T-72B1 with no missiles. Basically, it's all about the missiles changing for those upgrades there. Armor packages. Yeah, it's like a slight upgrade, but it doesn't look like an upgrade, does it? It looks like a downgrade. I don't know if they're the wrong way around. I mean, obviously, the numbers are the right way around, though. And then you can upgrade the engine to make things a little bit faster, but not much. T-72 B3. Only gets a defense package. So we can upgrade it to the B3M, which changes not a huge amount. I think it does a bit of change to some of the stats here, but hasn't changed the main number on the front, obviously. Uh, the OBR-16, yeah, again, it's just changing the armor a bit. That's got an active protection system, and again, active protection system. T80 BV, and we can choose unit variants for this one. 2017 variant, 2018 variant, and 2018 plus variant. Obviously, just minor changes throughout. And then you've got the Typhoon, which is just a big truck. And you can have an auto cannon on there if you want, or just the standard cord. So, support. Again, there's loads of stuff in here. This is my point. This video is going to be long. So we've got the MSTAS, 
And we can change this weapon package to the M1, M2 from M1. Doesn't change too much, I think it just changes its uh, weapon capability, which is fine. The Nona, again a classic vehicle, which does get an armor upgrade. Nona being a uh, mortar more than anything else, obviously. Ectasia, another uh, artillery piece. Weapon package upgrades. Not a huge difference, just fires a bit faster. Better aim time. The Tulpan, which is just a massive mortar. 240mm mortar. No upgrades for that. Little Droik. No upgrades for that, just a little mortar carrier. The Grad, how does the Grad not have any upgrades? I guess not. Thought it might have an option for which type of rockets it could launch. The Uragan gets a weapons package because you can have 300mm rockets or just the standard 220mm. You got the Kama, which has 300mm rockets. Or you can have a fast, you can have basic reload, or fast reload variant. Interesting. I like the fast reload variant option. Expensive though. The classic smirch, no upgrades there. Should it need any? I doubt it. A very big artillery gun, the Berger, Berger, Berger. No upgrades for that. The Kamaz. I'm surprised there's no upgrade for that. I thought it might get a gun. This gets an armor package. The Kamaz 6500. Yeah. Minor upgrades to armor. It's still not going to take many hits. Osa. Anti-air. Panzer. Again, anti-air. No upgrades there. We can't even see the details on that one. There we go. It actually has a 30mm cannon on it. I thought it was just a launcher. I guess it does have cannons on the side of the launchers there. Okay. That's a uh, more heavy duty anti air, I think. The TOS 2. Anti infantry, probably thermobaric. A Ural with a. Uh, and yeah, weapon on the back, and the same again, but with uh, Iglas as well. It does get an armor package. Not a lot of armor, though. Nothing too exciting. Standard Ural, which does get an armor package as well. And then the Shulka. Another classic. With radar. With radar and Iglas. No sign of a Tunguska yet. Logistics, there isn't actually anything listed. Fair enough. Helicopters, quite a nice selection already. So we've got the KA-29. Look at the size of that thing. It's huge. Very bulky. Weapons-wise, empty or an auto cannon on that one. Just one on that side. In the pylons, you either have rockets or gun pods. And out of pylons, you can have rockets... Cockered missiles or attacker ATGMs, depending on how much you want to spend. No armor upgrades, obviously. The KA-50, another well-known classic. We do like that. So, inner pylons, rocket pods, only option currently. Outer pylons, empty or Vikir ATGMs. KA-52, equally well-known. Rockets, empty... Or a different type of rocket. Bigger rockets, I assume, there. Doesn't... 130mm uh, versus 80mm. So, yeah. Bigger rockets. Uh, middle pylons, Vickiers, or big rockets. And outer pylons, anti-air missiles. Very nice. The Mi-24K... Again, MI-24 is well-known. Empty or rockets and outer pylons. Empty rockets or gun pods. The MI-24P. That's going to have the inner pylons, which will be rockets or empty. 
middle pylons, rockets, cock-ons, or R60 anti-air. We're going to see a lot of anti-air on this one. Outer pylons, cock-on. I'm surprised we didn't see more anti-air on the outer pylons there, to be honest. The MI-24 VP. Inner pylons again. Rockets are empty. Rockets or cock-ons. And again, that's just basically massively anti-tank. The MI-26, look at the size of that. That is your supply chopper, if nothing else. The MI-28N. It's quite a little attack chopper, isn't it? Very uh, much more like an American one. Just a little bit smaller. Rocket pods and outer pylons. Rockets, rockets. Attacker ATGM. Attacker ATGM and Iglers are just some Iglers. Look at that. One a set of options. You get a lot of those. You get a lot of options there. Carries a lot of weaponry, that thing. The MI-8 AMT SHVN. Again, plenty of options. Different types of rockets are empty. Out of pylons, cock-ons, attacker ATGM or Iglers. Inner pylons as well. Empty, but I assume they're going to add something. Maybe. The MI-8 MTV-2. Classic. Rocket pods or gun pods. And rocket pods available on the outside. And then the cargo variant, which does allow still for some weapons to be fitted there. Oh, wow. Decent amount of options for weapons on that. And then finally, we're on to the aircraft. Last but not least, into the hangar we go. The IL-76 MD. I assume transport... It does have guns on it, though. Where are the guns? I can't even see where they are. Maybe it's just forward-facing? I don't... You would have thought it was like a gun on, on the bottom or something. Or maybe... No idea. It does appear to have guns, though. Not sure where they are. Maybe they're supposed to be down here and the person that sat in the bottom can control them? Unsure. The MiG 31 BM. Options for various anti air missiles, I think, here. I believe these are all anti air. Yeah, helicopter and aircraft. Longer range. I wish it didn't reset every time, but yeah. Now that's anti-ground, I think. Yeah, it's a cruise missile, a K-59. Bombs as well. 1,500 pound bombs or kilogram bombs, which is it? 1,500 kilograms. And the PKB-500U. Is that a dispenser? It is a low-drag bomb. I wondered if that was a cluster munition of some kind. I can't remember now. PK, BBK500U. Not sure. And then on the fuselage, we can again have the usual anti-air. Is that really on the bottom? Oh, there are four in there, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's the long range one. 12,000 meters. The SU 24 M2. I'm expecting options for anti air, options for bombing, plenty of options for bombing. Look at all the bombing options here. Wow. Obviously, various different types of bombs. I'll let you explore each individual one and what they mean. You can look them up online. Yeah, same again. So bombs on that, and then on the actual fuselage, once again, bombs. 
We actually 24 MP, sorry, before we get too far ahead of ourselves. It seems to be slightly more... Slightly more... Inter seems to be aimed slightly more at air to ground, but it can do anti-air. And the inner pylons... Yeah, I feel like this is a bit more air to ground roll. SU-25, classic. One of the jets I fly in DCS because it's nice and simple. Uh, and you, yeah, I mean, anti-air missiles, ECM pods in the outer wingtips, outer pylons. I mean, you've got the option of anti-air missiles, rocket pods, various rocket pods, bombs of various descriptions, middle pylons. Rockets, 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 bombs. Some of these are going to be dispensers or... Oh, wow. Are they just other big bombs? Yeah, high drag bombs. Inner pylons. Big missiles. So, some of these are like... Lead Pursuit Missile, Heat Damage. I would have thought... I thought the KH-58s were anti-radar, but I could be wrong. It doesn't specify, does it? Not seeing any Vickers on here. So, in uh, DCS you can take Vickers, but I can't see any on there. Okay. And back... SU-30, obviously air superiority is the name of the game here, yeah, in fairness it has the K-29 as well which is anti-ground and the 31 is anti-ground as well, it does have some anti-ground stuff, inner pylons, Again, aiming mainly at anti-air, but you can take anti-ground. I mean, there's plenty of options. You can't really complain. SU-34. I do love the design of the jet. I will say that much for the SU-34. Again, main focus being anti-air on the outer pylons. Inner pylons... Certainly plenty of bomb options. Inner pylons, again, plenty of bomb options. And the same on the fuselage itself. SU-35S. Mixture of ECM and anti-air on the outside there. Inner pylons. Again, a, a significant focus on anti-air for this jet. Yeah. Yeah. Mainly anti-air. The SU-57. And it just has bays, obviously. So forward bay is option of some anti-air. Oh, we're heading into sort of the realms of anti-ground, I think. Yeah. And bombs as well as an option. And rear bay. Yeah, exactly the same again. The tu 160. That is a big bomber. Bomb options. Obviously. Many and various. Some very, very big bombs. Some very big bombs. The TU-22 M3. Again. Get a couple of wing options on this, but it is a, mainly a big bomber with the bomb bay. Plenty of options there. And then, last but not least, the TU-95. Quite old, I suppose, but uh, all about the bombs, but it is not finished, and you cannot select what bombs go in it yet. But I expect that will be where one of your tactical nukes will come from. And that's it, guys. That is... Everything for the Russians that was released or shown off in this demo's arsenal or the armory, whatever you want to call it. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. Please do like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all soon when hopefully we'll be getting loads more news on Broken Arrow.